Hello everybody, welcome back to the beginner scripting series. Today is part 5 and I'm really excited about this one. This one is if statements and uh, we're going to be taking a look at these. These are super actually like they're really fun um, to learn. They're super important. Um, this really controls a lot of your game so you're not going to want to miss a second of this. Make sure you watch all the way through as I reveal what they are. Alright, so first off, let's just define if statements. You use if statements to basically ask the computer a question. So you're going to ask the script if something is something, okay? So, uh, for example, you could ask the computer, is 5 greater than 3? Stuff like that. Or is my channel name CodeBear29? Right? So you can ask things like that, and um, that is what if statements do. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. Let's grab a new script in server script service. We're going to create a new script, and I'm going to call it if statements, uh, just if script. So in this video, we're going to be covering if, else if, and else, okay? Uh, and the different ways you check some different scenarios. All right, so let's get rid of this print hello world, and let's start by creating some variables that we're going to use. So we'll say local channel name, whoops, channel name equals, and I'm going to put my channel name here. You can put whatever you want, but this is a string, okay, with quotation marks. Um, if you haven't seen the variables episode, I really suggest you watch it. Um, and then let's just say uh, local watching local recording, because right now I'm recording, equals true. So we have these two variables. Now, I want, I already know the answer, but this is just so I can teach you guys how it works. Um, I'm going to ask the computer if recording, if I am recording. So basically what I can say is if recording, right, which is our variable, equals equals true, then, okay, and drop a line at it. Automatically creates the end. This is our if statement right here. So, what why do I use equals equals? Well, the thing is with if statements, if you're going to say if recording equals true, you have to use two in a row. It's it's kind of weird, but it's it's basically the way that Roblox knows you are talking about an if statement and not talking about creating a variable like we did up here. Um, so that's what you have to do. So the formatting is if, and then you can check your condition. If recording equals equals true, then we're going to do what's inside of here. So if recording is true, we can just say print we are recording okay now let's go ahead and hit play and as you can see we have we are recording right here in the output all right so that is cool but what if we asked if is recording equals false so if it recording equals equals false then print we are not recording okay now let's go ahead i'm actually going to run it this time so it doesn't uh put me in the game now if we run it, we realize we don't have anything in the output, and that's because the if statement realized, well, recording is not false, so it's just going to ignore it. Now, what if we wanted to check both ways, to see, really see if we're doing it? So we can say, if recording equals equals false, then print, we are not recording. Then we can drop a line and say, else, and this time, you don't need an extra end, as long as it is inside of this if statement you can't add an extra end okay it just goes in here and then we have our else and then after the else is when uh, what the script should do if recording is not false or true um, so if recording is anything except for false we are going to print recording is not false so the reason I'm not printing we are recording is because recording could be anything if uh, record, recording could be a string. It could be a number. We're basically saying if recording is false, then print we're recording. But else, if it's anything else, if recording is not false, if it's anything else, then we're going to print recording is not false. That's why I'm not saying else recording is uh, true. Because it could be a string. We know it's not, but it could be. Now, let's go ahead and hit uh, run. Now, as you can see, recording is not false printed in the output. Now, let's talk about else if. So, there's one other thing you can do, and that is between the if statement and the else statement, and this is else if. So, let's just say else if, and it's one word, okay? Recording equals equals true, then. And again, with both else if and else, you don't add an end. But with else if, you also have to add a condition, right? 
if recording is true, and then you have to add an a then. With else, that's all it is. So now we can in here say print, we are recording. So what this is saying is if we're re if recording is false, then we are not recording. If recording is true, then we are recording. Otherwise, we just know that it's not false or true. Um, we just know that it is something else. So let's go ahead and hit run. And as you can see, we have we are recording. Okay. So that is how if else and else if works. If you want to understand why I'm using um, else if here, if you just change this to a string, even string true, it's going to print recording is fa is not false which is our else, because all it's checking, it's saying if recording is false, then we're going to do this. Else if recording is true, then we're going to do this. Else anything else, we're going to just print that, okay? And you can have as many else ifs as you want, but you can only have one if and one else for each statement. You can definitely drop out of here and do your own separate uh, new if statements if you want, but you can only have one if and one else per if statement. Now I quickly want to um, teach you about concatenating. I was trying to figure out when to teach you about that, but it's not going to be a full lesson um, on, there's not going to be a full lesson on this, so I'm just going to throw it in here. Concatenating is joining two things together. Usually I use it for strings, but you can use it for numbers or whatever. Um, so let me just show you really quick what concatenating is. We can say channel name equals to code okay and then what we can say is we can change channel name we can say channel name equals channel name so we're saying channel name is equal to what it's currently so it's it's gonna be code and then you can say dot dot and add a string and you can say 29 and basically what this dot dot is saying is it's adding bro 29 to it so it has code add bro 29 so it's gonna join them together and now let's just go ahead for fun let's print channel name and we can hit we can hit run and as you can see it prints code bro 29 even though we never specifically said that channel name equals in a full string code bro 29 that's what concatenating does it joins strings or other data types together so what i want to show you is we can use this to um, print that. So we can say recording variable colon and a space with the concatenating you want to leave a space if you want a different word because um, basically it's going to join these two strings together without leaving a space here. If we wanted a space we'd have to add a space. Okay, So we're saying recording variable and we are going to print along dot dot recording. Okay, so here what it's going to say is if it's recording is false, it'll say recording variable dot dot recording and it'll print recording variable false because that's what we told it to concatenate. So um, we don't really need it for this one because we already know if it's going to do this, we already know that recording is false. So I'm going to put this back to recording is false. Whoops, recording is false. Okay. And then down here, we're going to print recording is not false. Instead of that, we're going to say recording variable and then the colon and the space dot dot recording. So here we can actually print if we don't know exactly what it's going to be. So if recording is false, then else if it's true. Else, what if it's not true or false? And maybe we're confused. We don't know what it is. We can say recording variable and concatenate recording. So if we hit run, we have recording variable right here, recording variable true. See that? And this is a string, by the way. This isn't a bool. This is a string where we set it here. We can use that for things like concatenating the time of day. Let's just go ahead and do a little test. If you click on lighting in the Explorer, I'm going to close out words of encouragement real quick. And you scroll down, you see this value called time of day, and it goes by military time, so it has 1430 is the time of day. Let's go ahead and come out here and let's change this property manually. We talked about that last time, and we can say 20, and that is going to make it dark, okay? And what we can do is we can set it back to 15 if we want, okay? 
And let's just use an if statement to check and see what the time of day is. Let's just say if game, right, all of this, everything in our game is that. But instead of going to the workspace like we usually do, we're going to go into lighting. And we can say game.lighting dot time of day equals equals and then uh let's see what time is it it's currently 15 zero 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 so it's currently 15 o'clock but let's just say let's check to see if it's 14 so we do a string because this is a string it's not a number type you can tell that because it has colons here separating the numbers so we'll say if it is 14 o'clock then okay print then we can say print it is 14 zero 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 okay and then we can say else maybe we're not sure what the time of day is maybe we have this day and night cycle which actually will um by the end of the series i might add that into the final video so just be aware of that um we can say print in the string and we can say time of day is space and then we can concatenate game dot lighting dot time of day okay now let's run this and as you can see, we have time of day is 15.0000. So it's really cool what you can do with if statements. And um, I hope that that was a helpful video for you. Don't worry if it doesn't make all that much sense yet. Um, it takes some practice just like any other thing you are learning. When you learn coding, it truly is like learning a language. It's hard to learn. It's time consuming. But if you put the time and effort into it, you really can learn. I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, I wanted to say before you guys leave, um, I haven't announced this yet, but at the end of this series, the last episode, I believe it's going to be 14. This is going to be a 14 episode series, pretty long series. That's what I did last time, um, but it covers so much beginner scripting. But at the last video, the 14th video, I'm planning to make a game with you, and I haven't decided what that is, but um, I'm going to do a video where I go start to finish just creating a game on a recording with everything that we've learned so far. We're only going to be using what we learned in the series, and I'm going to show you how what I'm teaching you right now can actually be applied to make a real game. So I hope you're excited about that. I really am. If you have any ideas for what that final game is, I already have an idea, so I may go ahead and go with that, but I'd like to hear your options. If you have an idea, drop it in the comments below. So I hope you're excited for that. I hope you want to stay through the series uh, because that'll be really cool. Also, make sure to just join my Discord server. Link like always in the description. Thanks again to my first Patreon. If you want your name shouted out at the end of my videos or you would like to access the source code for these videos, the project file, you just double click and download the file. Make sure to become a Patreon today. Links also in the description. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next part.